What's going on everyone? This is Ivan and welcome back to the Ivan Rides YouTube channel. Today we are taking the NAMI Klima Max and we are doing a long range commute from Queens through Brooklyn and into Manhattan. Uh, on this video I'd like to talk to you guys about my ownership experience of the NAMI Klima Max for the first hundred miles. We're gonna go over the good and some of the things that I kind of miss about my NAMI Burn E. So, if you'd like to know a little bit more about what it's like to own a NAMI Klima Max, or you're just interested in seeing the sights and sounds of New York, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. It's good to have you on board today. All right, before we start the official 100 mile review of the NAMI Klima, I'd like to get a word in from our sponsors. It's the first sponsor for the channel, so I hope you're as excited as I am to meet them. So your first sponsor on the Ivan Rides YouTube channel is me. <laughs> uh, I hope, uh, hope you enjoy that one. I'd like to remind everybody that I am now officially an affiliate of fluid free rides for electric scooters, beyond riders for armored clothing, shred lights for PEV lighting, and Insta360 for action cameras. Y'all know that I always use these brands, so I'm excited to be affiliated by them. And if you want to support the channel by purchasing something that you were already planning on purchasing, uh, you can use my link in the description of this video. And if there's a discount code, you're welcome to save some money on there as well. So with that sponsored message out the way, let's get started with this 100 mile review. Generally, within the first 100 miles of ownership of a PEV, you can get a good feel for uh, what it's going to be like to own it long term. And with the Klima, there's going to be one thing here that everyone's probably really interested in hearing about, especially because I specifically chose a first generation Klima Max, and these guys are known to have a brake sensor issue. And you're probably wondering, Ivan, in the first 100 miles, did you encounter the brake sensor issue? And the answer is yes. I chose this scooter knowing that that was there because I am not the biggest fan of the new taillights that they've installed on it. So. I prefer this one and I figured I'll just work around it by troubleshooting and that's exactly what we did. So when we first got the scooter out the box we did some brake sensor checks. Uh, originally it was only the left one here that needed to be changed because when you squeezed it the motor kill stayed on and wouldn't come off so we swapped that out. The right one didn't need any tweaks, but the right one eventually started acting up around 60 miles or so. And it only really acted up in the cold. But luckily, I already was aware of the brake sensor issue. And I had a two millimeter Allen key with me and I made adjustments on the go. So the scooter went down twice during my morning commute but luckily it was a two second fix where i just kind of backed out the sensor itself and i was operating the scooter without any sensors within that first i would say 75 miles or so but i eventually told fluid about it and they got me new brake sensors about 30 miles ago and I haven't had any brake sensor issues since. So that is probably the biggest concern that most people have with the NAMI Klima or NAMI Klima Max in that first generation. And 
Oh, what the heck? We're doing 44 miles an hour. <laughs> Woo -wee. And plenty stable. Plenty stable. Oh man, that was that was an unexpected 44 miles an hour there. <laughs> like I was saying before, I was distracted by that little bit of speed there. Uh, we managed to correct it and it was a matter of just simply swapping out the brake sensors and now I have the package that I want. I have the tail lights that I want and I have the scooter that I want. So happy, 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 happy times there. You know, I don't really have anything scripted for this, so I just kind of want to talk to you guys about what it's like uh, owning the scooter and what the positives are right now. And one of the standout things that I will say with the Nami Klima within the first 100 miles of ownership is the initial torque that you get. The pickup on this scooter is pretty insane. Honestly, I haven't missed out much on performance on this guy except for maybe in the top end of the range the 0 to 30 on this scooter is really intense and really quick and it is plenty for city riding there hasn't been a situation where i was just like hmm i wish i had more power so i know everything right now within the PEV world is all about speed, 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 power, 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 power. And there's kind of this arms race going on. But in reality, 44 miles an hour and really, really good off the line torque is all we really need for most PEV riders. Like I said, unless you really, really need that speed and you live on a road that requires you to have 50 miles an hour plus, it is kind of overkill for the city. The second thing that I've really enjoyed is the scooter's nimbleness. Like being a lighter, smaller scooter, I can really like flick it around where I couldn't do that before on the Burn E. Like, also, that, that does come with a drawback, but the ability to navigate into smaller gaps, uh, the smaller form factor in the apartment is also, uh, I would say, visually better. Even though the footprint is not that much smaller, just having something that is less huge makes the scooter easier to, to live with, especially for, for me living here in the city. It fits into a smaller corner at work. It fits into a smaller corner in my apartment. I'm happy. My landlords are happy. My neighbors are happier. And my wife is happy, which is all that really matters at the end of the day. But interesting thing here is the, the speaking of form factor, ever since I've downsized to this scooter, I've been having less issues with my neighbors in the building, which is really interesting. But like I said, we'll see how it goes. I've, I've run into my angry uh, neighbors a few times and yeah, they didn't even bat an eye. I like that I didn't have to give up much performance to get the smaller form factor and to get honestly like, a little bit better of a quality of life outside of PEVs with, with my home. I mean, like I said, I'm sad that I had to get rid of the Burn E, but in the future, when my wife and I get our own home, I'll have the Burn E4 Max GT Turbo, whatever, whatever it's gonna be called. And one of the other things that I've really enjoyed about the Klima Max so far is the range is unexpectedly really, really good. Like right now, we've been kind of blasting it. We've been averaging about 20 to 40 miles an hour on this ride. 
and we're already in Williamsburg and I've only used up uh, 7% on the max. I get that the battery is still new and we haven't put that much time on it or mileage on it yet, but I'm really happy with the range. I can still do everything that I did with the Burn E where I charge it every couple of days if I'm doing my short routes. So that's really nice there. I've yet to really test it on one of those intensive group rides yet, like the one that we did in Staten Island where we're doing like 30 miles, but it's 30 miles of like balls to the wall, blasting high speed up really steep hills, etc. things like that. This is more like general commuting and occasional top speed runs. And the other thing that I would probably say is outside of the range here is how people perceive the scooter when I bring it in indoors. I don't really... This, this is going back to, I guess, the, the form factor uh, statement that I made earlier. When I bring it into, let's just say, a, a Rite Aid or a Dwayne Reed or a general convenience store, I don't get as many dirty looks as I did with my Bernie. And that's, that's really appreciated because I want to be able to make it to work comfortably, quickly, in style while still being able to run the errands that I need to run with the scooter. And overall, quality of life so far has been great with the scooter. There are a few things that I wouldn't say are bad, but just I'm, I'm nitpicking here that I would like to improve or that I miss from the Burn E. And the first thing that I'm gonna say that I miss from the Burn E is a combination. It is the combination of the 11 inch tires, the PMTs, and the suspension. The suspension for the Klima is comfortable. The 10 inch tires that come with it, the CSTs, are great. However, I am spoiled by the 11 inch tires on the Burn E and I'm spoiled by that plush suspension on the Burn E. So I do feel the bumps quite a bit more and there are certain bumps that I'm used to flying over on the Burn E and barely feeling it that kind of jar me <laughs> on the Klima. And I always think I broke a rim, but it's really nothing too crazy. Uh, but it's just these small bumps with the smaller tires that make it feel much more, I would say, much rougher on the ride. Like right there, those bumps, the Bernie would barely flinch at it, but the Klima, you do feel it a bit more. But is it still comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, insanely comfortable for a majority of the rides, but when you start hitting these uh, bigger bumps, then it starts being like, ah, oh, right there, see, it's like, <laughs> The second thing that I really miss with the Bernie is the really wide deck. Um, I like being able to change my uh, riding position during a ride. I, I don't really get to stop often. Like right now, I'm flying through traffic and I'm not really getting a chance to switch my riding stance, which is okay, but it is a bit more tiring uh, doing that. And the other thing that I do miss with the Burn E that I am kind of missing with with this is the 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 cool factor of the scooter. I really like the design of both the Klima and the Burn E, but it's I I miss seeing that really cool tubular frame that wraps around those LED lights, and then that you know that classic Burn E look. But the Klima is still a pretty damn good looking scooter. But once again, like I said, I'm, I'm just a little spoiled by 
having the burnt E for so long. The final thing that I do miss, uh, that I honestly didn't think I would miss, is the the LED light strip. It looked really cool having it on the side of the scooter. But since the Klima is so minimal, it doesn't really have that. I know that's something that I can eventually add later on. We are about to enter this tunnel here where we're going to get another uh, top speed run before we get out. Okay. Let's see what you got, Klima. Let's see what you got. 42, 43. Super stable. Okay. At 77% battery, we are only getting up to 43 miles an hour now. But, once again, plenty, plenty, plenty fast. That is kind of the, I would say, uh, the most underrated uh, feature of the Klima is how stable it is for a scooter that goes 43, 44 miles an hour on the cockpit here with 10 inch tires. This scooter is really, really stable. And that's pretty much my thoughts on it uh, within the first 100 miles of ownership. Now, do I know how reliable the scooter is going to be? Uh, no, I'm hoping that it's going to be as reliable as my Burn E. Uh, I do have a few modifications coming to the scooter, and I'll share that with you guys in the future. The Nami Klima in the first 100 miles has been incredible. Um, it's fun, it's powerful, it's nimble, it's comfortable, and a lot of the uh, positives make me even forget <laughs> the Bernie. Now, do I miss the Bernie? Of course I do. Uh, it's been my partner for three years and the Klima at the end of the day is the new kid on the block. But I will say the Klima is doing an amazing job where, like I said, it's making me forget that I even switched to a smaller lightweight scooter. So far, outside of the two brake sensor uh, lockups that we had um, at around 50 and 60 miles of commuting, the scooter has been reliable and I have been using it daily. And the only reason that we don't have more miles on it right now is because we had a couple of holidays there where I didn't go into work. Shout out to Fluid Free Ride and Chuck and the team there, and of course my homie Ed uh, for helping me secure a first generation Klima Max. I'm really happy with it, and I look forward to putting thousands and thousands of miles on this guy. And with that said, this is the end of my 100 mile review of the NAMI Klima Max. Now, if you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps out the channel because it tells the algorithm that you like the videos and it also tells me that you like the videos. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the Klima Max, or if you just want to say hi. You know that I always respond to all my comments, so feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. If you really, really, really like my content and you want to support the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the Ivan Rides family. So there is an icon here on the bottom right with my logo on it. Just make sure you click on that and then turn on the bell notification so that I can notify you anytime a video comes out. We do e-scooter, e-bike, e-skate content every Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. So 
subscribe, and I'll see you guys around. With that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all your support. I really do appreciate you. And remember, ride safe out there, wear your gear, and I'll catch you on the next ride. Peace out, everyone.